Our sermon text for this morning comes from the book of Romans, chapter 4, verses 13 through 25. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the, for the law brings wrath. Where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith. In order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us. And it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist, hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations according to what was said. So numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith. When he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning, concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death, for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. Let us go to God in prayer. Gracious God be with us this day as we hear your word and may we have the courage to put your word into practice now and always. Amen. Something that we do as human beings each day is make decisions. And the, the following are some examples of people who made some very poor choices. A woman was reporting her car as stolen and she mentioned to the police officer that there was a car phone in the car. The policeman taking the report, he called the phone, he told the guy that answered that he had heard and read an ad that the car was for sale, they arranged to meet, and he arrested him for stealing the car. A young man walked up to two patrol officers who were showing their squad car computer equipment to a children in a nearby neighborhood. When he asked how the system worked, they asked him for a piece of identification. He gave them his driver's license. They entered it into the computer to show him how the computer worked. And then they arrested him because there was a warrant out for his arrest. <laughs> a police officer had a perfect hiding place.
for watching for speeders. And one day, everyone seemed to be going under the speed limit. The officer found the problem. A 10-year-old boy was standing on the side of the road with a huge sign that said, Radar Trap Ahead. <laughs> a little bit more investigative work was done, and the officer found the boy's accomplice about 100 yards beyond the radar trap with a sign that said, Tips Gladly Taken. <laughs> Decisions, sometimes we make the right ones and sometimes we really don't. In today's scripture, Paul is talking about people who live their lives by following the law or by living by faith. He explained in this letter to the Romans the importance of living by faith, of distinguishing between living by following the law. People believe that if a person was good and they followed the law to the letter, then they could earn salvation. But Paul dispelled that notion by emphasizing the need for faith in Christ. And not just any faith, a faith so strong that salvation was open to everyone, Jew and Gentile alike. And to drive his point home, he talked about Abraham and how Abraham's faith in God had been such an important part of his life. Abraham had a faith that pleased God. He was known as the founder of the Jewish nation. He was courageous in defending his family. He was known for his hospitality. He was a wealthy rancher. He was best known for the faith he displayed before God. We're talking about Abraham and how he displayed his faith when God told Abraham to pick up his whole family and move them to an undisclosed location, he faithfully obeyed. When God told Abraham and his wife Sarah that they would have a child, and at the time both were well past child raising days, and they were both taking full advantage of AARP, their faith allowed them to have that child. Their faith allowed them to believe in the love and the power of God. Okay, now, Sarah did laugh at first, at the very notion, but it was their faith that empowered them to do amazing things in God's name. God made a promise to Abraham that in him the world would rise and there would be a great nation of people because of Abraham. This promise came to Abraham because of his faith, because of his trust, because of his openness and his confidence in God. This was counter to the belief that stated mainly that the right relationship to God was one that could be achieved by winning, by earning, by acquiring merit in the sight of God, by doing works, and by following what the law prescribed. In today's scripture, Paul is trying to explain the difference between living a life based on faith and living a life when you follow the law. And so that's what I want to do today. I want to look at both types of living, both types of individuals in this world. Both types are decent, kind, compassionate souls. Both types can be people who strive to make this world a better place and who live as good persons. One type tries to accomplish this by following the law and the moral and ethical codes of society. The other tries to accomplish this by following a right relationship with God. One is dependent on human effort. The other relies on divine grace. So let's look at each individual. First, there is the person who follows the law. This is a terrific way to live and a good way to stay out of trouble. If one follows the law and obeys it fully, then they will stay on the right path and they will not do things that are counter <coughs> to society. Following the law gives one structure. It allows us to color within the lines, and we are less, less likely to stray when we are following a book of instructions. Following the law also puts a lot of focus on our own merits. When we obey and we do what society directs, we then can dictate how much success and how much failure we will encounter. Whether we rise high or whether we remain average is totally dependent on our own abilities. When we follow the law, we are constantly being judged by how we measure up to the law. When we follow the law, it will point out our mistakes, but it will not demonstrate any kind of remedy 
to those shortcomings. When we follow the law, when we rely on our own efforts, when we do things solely to triumph, then sooner or later transgressions will follow. When a person lives their life by the law, it means that they live by what our secular society deems as correct behavior. This could be a good, decent person, a person who follows the rules, a person who tries to make this world a better place, a person who continually strives to improve their surroundings and circumstances. This may be a person who believes in God, but they live their lives and try to be in a right relationship with God through their own means. A person who thinks that their accomplishments will earn them salvation. Lots of people live life in this way and they are wildly successful. And this can be anybody, doctors, lawyers, teachers, captains of industry, rich people, poor people, famous and non-famous individuals. People who volunteer their time and give up their resources to make a difference. They follow the rules, they are responsible, and through their efforts they can be instruments of change. But what about the other kind of person in the world? That is, the individual who follows a life of faith. They have similar attributes to the person who follows the law. They are kind and decent and loving and conscientious. But this person has certain characteristics that are lacking from the average law-abiding person. First of all, they believe in God's promise. Out of his faithfulness, God promised to make Abraham the father of all nations and to bless and guide his life. As Christians, we believe in that promise. William Barclay urges us to look at it this way. God promises to love his children no matter what they do. Whether we make him glad or sad, his love is true, and it is a love that will never let us go. God's love is not dependent on our merit, but only on God's own generous heart. We believe in God's promise. We also believe that as Christians, we need to possess faith. Faith is simply believing in that incredible love of God. God's love banishes fear. God's love conquers death. God's love moves mountains. God's love endures our pain. God's love never runs out. God's love gives us an unrelenting faith. And when we have faith and we have love, the third item that we possess over the person which lives by the law is that gift of grace. Grace is a gift from God and it is never earned, it is never deserved. Grace is that understanding of all that God does for us. God's grace gives us another chance. It imparts on us forgiveness. It demonstrates mercy. It showers us with love. It reunites us with God through that love of Christ. It conveys that in God's eyes, we are worth it. Paul emphasizes in these verses that God made a promise to Abraham. And that promise was fulfilled, not because Abraham followed the law, but because Abraham's faith allowed him to trust in God. My study Bible commentary says this, Abraham never doubted that God would fulfill his promise. Abraham's life was marked by mistakes, sins, failures, as well as by goodness and wisdom. But he consistently trusted God. His faith was strengthened by the obstacles he faced and his life was an example of faith in action. If he had looked only at his own resources for founding a nation, he would have given up in despair. But Abraham looked to God, obeyed, waited for God to fulfill his word. That's from my life application Bible. There is a difference between living by faith and living by the law. One focuses on merit and success. The other focuses on God's glory and showing that glory to the world. Our faith in God's grace not only gets us through the day, it should also make us leap out of bed like a house on fire. And speaking of which, that puts us right into our story for today. 
It is a story that I am taking great liberties with, but it was originally written by a Danish philosopher named Soren Kierkegaard. And it's a story about a fireman. And this is a fireman who lived in a small village, and he was adored, revered, loved by all in the village. He was big and strong and brave as firemen tend to be. But the difference in this fireman is he also had a kind and gentle soul, and he really was a very loving person. And he would, he would do more than just show up when there was a, a need for healing or there was a need to fight a fire or a need to rescue. He would always follow up and he would take the time to check on people and care for them and make sure that they were important in the world. And so the town got together one day and they decided they wanted to do something to show their support for this fireman. And one day this fireman and all his firemen friends got called to fight a fire, a big warehouse fire with the whole building engulfed in flames. And they, they, they show up and they get out of the truck and they get all their gear and they go to fight the fire. And before they get to the building, in front of them are about 200 townspeople. And they've all got squirt guns in their hand. And they're all aiming it at the building engulfed in flames and trying to put out the fire with 200 squirt guns. And the fireman, the one that they are supporting, says, what are you all doing here? This, this is crazy. And they said, we, we just think you're so good and kind. We're here to support you. We're here to show you that what you do is appreciated. And he said, a fire is not a place to show that support. You're not trained firefighters. You need to go. And the response was, as they're still squirting to put out the fire, their response was, we know we're not trained, and we know there's not much we can do, but we want to show you, we want to do a token to show you our support. We want to do something that shows you that we are, that we need you and that we support you. And now the fireman's not the nice, gentle soul that he was thought of because he starts yelling and screaming at them and saying, you people really are crazy. You're not trained. You shouldn't be here. People, people can get hurt here. A fire is not a place to come and show your token support. A fire is a place where people come to give their life. God loves us so much, he gave us his life. He gave us the sacrifice of his son who gave up his life for us. And we, and Jesus never did what he did on earth as a token show of support or appreciation. He showed up and he gave everything to what God needed him to do. And we're asked to do the same, not by following some law, but by following the law of our hearts and doing what God would instruct us to do. We are told to come and give our very lives to that fire. That fire is that faith and that love of God that burns inside us. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are so grateful that you are here. Continue to be here and be with us, O oh God. Now and always. Amen.